obstacles that we see in matrimony. You see how this in-law was ungrateful to Jacob. Very ungrateful to Jacob. When he saw that Jacob's wives and maids were having children, and God was blessing and prospering him, see, he began to be very jealous. Very jealous. He himself testified that he knows that it is because of Joseph that God has blessed him. He testified that in the scriptures. Look at verse uh, 17 of Genesis chapter 30. Look at verse uh, uh, chapter 30. Have you seen that? If you read the whole of chapter 30, you see how the, ch the wives of Jacob began to have children, how God was opening their wombs and so forth. But look at verse 27 of chapter 30. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? See? In verse 26, we see Jacob asking Laban to give him his wife and children. He wants to go back to his country. And Jacob, Laban began to beg him, please don't go, stay. By experience, I have discovered that all my blessings that I have came from God through you. It was through you that God blessed me. Don't go. But yet, he was very trickish. He began to change the wages of Jacob. As his children began to accuse Jacob of stealing their father's sheep, stealing their father's goat, and so forth. So Jacob says, I mean, Laban says to Jacob, For now, all the sheep that is black will be your wages. All the white ones will be my own. And God showed Jacob what to do in a dream, and he did it. And all the sheep that delivered strong, strong, strong sheep and strong ram were all black. All the ones that were white, all of them have typhoid. You just see them shaking up and down. None of them is strong, but they're all white. Jacob noticed this, that all the healthy and strong sheep were black. So he said, okay, uh, uh, we're going to change this thing. Uh, all the speckled, the ones that are speckled, black and white, black and white, black and white, will be your own. And all the ones that are fully black and fully white will be my own. Jacob says, okay, I agree, sir. In the dream, God showed Jacob what to do. He cut a stick, peel it halfway, halfway, halfway. Half of it was covered, half of it white, half of it covered, half of it white. Put it beside the water where the sheep come to drink. So all the pregnant sheep are looking at that stick and drinking, looking at it and drinking, and all their children will turn like that. <laughs> oh my God. Praise the name of the Lord. So all the strong sheep and ram, all of them that came out became speckled, 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 and everyone that is absolutely white and absolutely black became kwashoko. You know kwashoko type? Big head and nothing more. And they were all sick, sickly type. God has all again defeated the plan of Laban. Because God promised Jacob, I will be with you. I will prosper you. His father prayed that God will bless him. God will prosper him. And see it working. His children, I mean his wives, began to have children. Boys, 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 just boys. The maids were having boys. The wives were having boys. Just, let's, let's read some of that in chapter 30. Chapter 30. Are you there? Verse 1. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I in God's stead, who had withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold my maid, Bila, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bila, her handmaid to wife. And Jacob went in unto her, and Bila conceived and bare him a son. And Rachel said, God had judged me. I had also heard my voice. I had given me a son. Therefore, called she his name. Can I hear you? Better. 
And Bila, Rachel's maid, conceived again and bad Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestling, have I wrestled with my sister? And I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zippah, her maid, and gave her, gave her Jacob to wife. And Zippa, Leah's maid, bar Jacob a son. And Leah said, a troop comet. And she called his name God. And Zippa, Leah's maid, bar Jacob a second son. And Leah said, happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asha. And Reuben went in the days of what of wood harvest. And found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrake. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore, he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening. And Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived, and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God hath given me my hire, because I have given my maidens, my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. And Leah conceived again, and bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God hath endured me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulon. And afterwards, she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. And God remembered Rachel. <laughs> See? Praise the Lord. And God remembered Rachel. And God had come unto her and she and opened her womb. And opened her womb. And she conceived and bare a son and said, God had taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And said, The Lord shall add to me another son. And it came to pass, when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go unto my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord had blessed me for thy sake. Can we say amen? Yes. Can we say amen? Yes. In a marriage that is blessed. See, there was nothing secret about this marriage. No part of it was hidden. No. No part of it was a secret. Conducted by telephone. Conducted by some letters. Secret letter, secret phone calls, in rebelliousness, in disobedience. Baba Magbo, Baba Magbo, Baba Noma, Maria. And when Baba parries it the way you don't expect, your heart is broken, you are so disappointed, you don't know what to do. But see the type, the, the steps that a marriage that is destined to be a blessing should take. See how God blessed this man because he obeyed his father, he obeyed his mother, he obeyed his God. He had another brother called Esau. No one was doing what he liked. Jacob didn't copy him because it is always easier to copy the wrong things. But Jacob was not interested in copying the wrong things. Praise the name of the Lord. That should teach us a lesson. That should teach us a lesson. So if you are planning to get married, it is in your hands now to lay the foundation of a successful and blessed marriage or to lay the foundation of a trouble infested marriage. May the Lord help us. Amen. You have heard the word of God. 
There's no for you need to pray. Pray that God, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, will also be your God. And lead you. And bless you. And prosper you. Just like he did Jacob. Are you presently engaged? Is it a secret? Is it open? Is it known? Is God involved? Is your father in the Lord involved? Is your natural father involved? There are so many students who should concentrate on their studies. They are allowing themselves to be distracted. But I want to marry you, I don't want to marry you. By the message now, you know that you are laying a foundation of a crisis-infested marriage. You need to confess to God now to forgive you because you have behaved like Esau. How many ladies have you promised to marry in your lifetime? At 30, at 25, even at 18, you have promised three or four or five girls you will marry them. What an Esau spirit. Esau went out and carried two at the same time. His father never blessed him one day. Neither did God. How many men have promised you, I will marry you, I will marry you, I will marry you? How many at a time? It's because you are not led by the Holy Spirit. That's why you don't know which one is the flesh of your flesh and the bone of your bone. Anyone that comes, you will walk in secret to yourself. That's why they come to you in secret. And they live in secret. That's not the will of God. Jacob was a shepherd. Rachel was a shepherd. The moment both of them met, what God has joined together, nothing can separate it. Even though Laban's when you tried, it did not succeed. So if you have been such a person engaged in deceiving ladies, and you ladies, you are deceivable every time, let us pray now that God will remove that spirit of deception in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you who are not ready to marry. Young men, not ready. Not this year. Not next year. You know it. And you tell a young lady you want to marry her. But you know you're not ready. And you just keep her wasting away. I know some who have done it to young ladies. Keep them for three, four years. And at the end, they disappoint them. I don't know what God will do with such a person. Because that's a terrible deception. A terrible spirit of deception. Then there are some of you who are more than ready to marry. But because of the, 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 the flirting spirit in your life, you just can't settle down. You just don't want to settle down. In you also is a deceit, deceitful spirit. Deceiving you. We want to pull down those deceit, deceitful spirits. For the Bible says God has given us power to pull down the strongholds of the devil. Where has the devil built a stronghold in your life? Is it in the area of women? Or in the area of money? Or in the area of men? We can pull it down in the name of Jesus Christ. Set yourself free. Peter said in the Bible, he said we should deliver ourselves from this crooked and outdoor generation. So far, so good. We are going to close this convention with a scripture uh, that I want to read here. And then everybody will get ready to move and go home. And uh, those that wish to see me, we shall talk a little later. But if you have your Bibles, can you turn with me to the book of Ruth? Ruth. Ruth is after Judges, after Joshua. After the book of Joshua, you have Judges. After Judges, you have Ruth. Ruth chapter 3. Ruth chapter 3. Reading from verse 1. Then Naomi, then Naomi her mother, in law said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? May God bless his word in Jesus' name. Yeah. May we sit there. There come a time in the life of a woman when she needs to settle down. There come a time in the life of a man when he needs to settle down. 
God did not make a wife for Adam the day that Adam was created. It was after some time. We don't know how long. See? And when Adam saw his wife, he was happy about it. See? As if he was expecting her all this time. So there is a time in the life of a man when he needs rest. And the only rest that he needs can only be found in his wife. And also there's a time in the life of a woman, not a teenager, not a child. A woman, when she needs rest, and that rest can only be supplied by her husband. And I think some of you are long overdue. Take these tips of these messages and give it to people you think need them. They should go to all the churches of the believers. And let the youths of all churches hear all these messages. Inform all the pastors you know that they need to get all the messages of this convention. And play it for their youths to listen. So that they too can be lifted up like God has done for you. And cleaned up and sanctified. And worthy to be called youths for God. So, marriage is here described as rest. And there are some of you who know that you need this rest. You have wandered away too much. From one woman to another, from one man to another, from one woman to another, from one man to another, you need to find some rest. Naomi said, my daughter, I think it's high time I find you rest. And she recommended Boaz. And Boaz was their relation and a godly man and a good man. And Ruth did not regret getting married to Boaz. And Boaz did not regret getting married to Ruth. Rest is what God promises people. Rest is what Jesus promises church. And only in God can we find rest. Is that true? The church of Jesus Christ. Uh, turn with me to the book of Psalms. I think it's chapters 27, 37. 37. And uh, I want to read verse 7, I think. Psalms 37 and 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Can we say amen? amen. Rest in the Lord. Our soul always find rest. Where? In the Lord. So should a wife find rest in her husband. So should husband find comfort in his wife. And he says, by no means go and do evil. By no means run around because somebody who prospers and you don't know his ways. By no means channel your life after the life of people you don't understand their ways. Relax in God. Rest in God. He will surely at his own good time remember you and reward you for waiting for him for resting in him i think there are so many young people today whose life has become a mess whose life has become miserable whose life has become uh, upside down just because they have tailored their lives after the lives of the wicked or those that prosper around them and they want to tailor their lives up to fit into those lives instead of waiting and resting in god I'm trying to introduce you today to the fact that every young youth, every youth should find rest. Find rest for your soul in God. And find rest for your body in your wife or in your husband. If you read the book of Matthew, chapters 11, that we all know very well, that is what God promises people. And that's what every husband should have for his wife. Chapters 11 and verse 28 and 29. Come unto me, all you that labor under heavy laden. And I give you what? Rest. I give you what? Rest. See? I give you rest. Naomi said to Ruth, Why don't I find rest for you, my daughter? This is what every husband owes his wife. And this is what every wife owes the husband. As human, since we are still in this flesh... There is just no two ways about it. It is either God's way 
which is always the best way, or you tie yourselves with all sorts of sorrows. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And if there are some youths here today, like these questions, is it okay for a youth to date a youth? Is it okay for a teenage to platonically love a unit? It is it's okay. These are restless souls. It shows that the youth are restless in the things concerning love. They have mixed it all up. Mixed love with lust. Mixed lust with uh, infatuation. Mixed infatuation with all of them. And they don't know which one is working in them anymore. Love always works the glory of God. The rest of them work out the pleasure of men. And love never ends. Look at a teenager uh, you, uh, at 12 or 15. You say you're in love. And when you leave the school, you don't know where the person went. He doesn't know where you went. Everything ends there. That was not love to begin with. Because love does not end. Love doesn't end. Nothing stops it. So you are not in love in the first place. Because love is God working. When Jacob married Rachel, she wasn't having children. He didn't bother Jacob. He didn't put her away to go and look for another one. He didn't cause trouble in the home. Because he didn't marry her because of child or children. He married her because he loved her. See? It was the woman that got worried and said, look, give me a child. The man said, ah, give you a child. Am I God? Look, trouble. How can I give you a child? I've been trying my best. It's all right. Your best, Abby. And he went and got the housemaid and said, okay, try your best in this one. And when the child came, she said, God has blessed me. God has answered me. If it was today, they would take the child's head, put it on a stone, and crack it like a candle. Who told you to go that far? Did I say you should get belly? See? But this woman rejoiced that her maid has given her a child. And because of that, God remembered her and opened her womb. And she began to have babies. One of her children, Joseph, became the ruler of Egypt. Did you know that? It was this same woman, the Joseph of the Bible. So when you talk about teenage saying this and teenager, when I looked at all the questions this afternoon, I was weak. Only two or three were Bible questions. Why? How, through questions, I see the way your heart works. I see the way the heart works. If somebody by mistake unknowingly touches his breast and he unknowingly touch it and touch it, is that a sin? Somebody unknowingly touch breast. Why not touch leg? Why not touch hand? You don't know where breast today? How is unknowingly? See, I want to know how your heart is working. Huh? These questions expose them to me that most of the hearts of the teenagers are restless. Why? Some teenagers think they are adults and they're behaving like adults. That is wrong. Very soon, these my little children here will ask me whether it is all right for them to fall in love with you. Tell me what this one's need if it's not food. Just chop and sleep, that's all. Huh? Somebody is in secondary school, class one or two. And he's talking about falling in love. What do you know love is? And that's why they go to school from class one to class 100, they can't even write their name. Because they won't listen to teacher. They won't read their books at home. They won't do any assignment. Oh, they just take one letter that one stupid ghost smoker wrote to them. And they lie on the bed and read it five times. Read one letter five times. They don't know they are under a spell called lost. And they think they're in love. Restless hearts. If only a teenager will know that there is time for everything. This is my time to get education. Full final stop. Oh my God, help me not to waste my parents' money. And not to waste my time. Help me to get my education at this time. You finish with that. You move into the university. It is time to get education. When you finish with education, you face the next thing. When you finish that, you face the next thing. There is time for everything under the sun. You don't just gather everything together and you are confused. So you do none of them properly. Before you come out of school, seven men have passed your way. Huh? Before you come out of school, 20 women have passed your way. That you even lie to your parents to get money to settle the problems you got yourself into because the heart is restless. 
Find rest in Christ. Find your age bracket. And know what God expects your age bracket to be busy with. Whether schooling or learning of work. Rest your heart in the Lord. Let him help you. Leave other people. Don't channel your life about the prosperous people around you. Leave them alone. Wait on the Lord. He will bring the desires of your heart to pass. Look at Jacob the way he was blessed. Patiently. Patiently. He never thought about four wives. He thought he would get one. But he ended up with four. Everything he touched was blessed. Everything he touched was blessed. His brother heard about his prosperity on his way home and was going to fight him. God met his brother and told him, I know your mind. You are going to meet Jacob. When you meet him, don't say anything good or bad. Don't accuse him of stealing your inheritance. Don't say nothing good or bad. If not, you're a dead man. I am the God of Abraham. And God left. The man woke up in the morning tired. He jumped upon his horse. Before he got to Jacob, Jacob was dying with fear. He divided his family into three. And so the first first set be going take this hundred or i don't know how many sheep that he divided and say go, go with them when you meet my senior brother tell him uh this sheep i give him i dash him all so that it will cool his anger because he's coming to deal with us he has many soldiers and we are just a family and then the second one then i will be coming behind with the not knowing that god has already fought the battle yeah. see Amen. There are many things that worry us that we don't know that God has settled it. If only we can wait. We will see that God has already resolved it. So, Esau got there and saw all the sheep. Meh, 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 meh. Forget about them. Went to meet his brother. What is all these sheep I see? He said, I send them to you. He said, no, I don't need them. He said, don't be annoyed with me because of what happened. He said, no, don't talk about annoyed though. Annoyed care. I even came to beg you. You know, God of our Father appeared to me last night. He said, I shouldn't say anything good or bad to you. If I say, I will be a dead man. So don't talk about it. I know you. I'm not annoyed at all. <laughs> at all. He said, okay, if you're not annoyed with me, take all these sheep that I gave you. He said, no, I won't take sheep. I have enough. Take your own. No, if you say you're not annoyed, take the sheep from me. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm not annoyed though. And the man left. God had already settled it. Amen. If not, he would have killed him and killed everybody. Because he's a carnal man. So there are certain things that trouble your soul, trouble your heart, that God has already settled. All you need to do is wait upon the Lord. Just wait, and you will find out that God has done it. Did you remember Mary and the women? On the first day of the week, they were going to the sepulchre to anoint the body of Jesus. They forgot he's supposed to be risen. But they stopped on the road and said, who will remove the stone? that covered the grave for us. Who will remove the stone? Oh, who will remove the stone? Oh, we have a problem. Who can help us remove the stone? While they were talking about the stone, they got closer and they looked and the stone was not there. Amen. God had taken care of it. And they were worried on the road. Most of us are like that. Worried about this, worried about that, restless about the things that shouldn't bother us. Only to find out that God has taken care of it. May the Lord help us. Amen. I want you to go home with the words of God that I have preached to you in this meeting and rest on those words because God will quicken them in their due season. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's turn together and read this last scripture. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. After Kings, you have Chronicles. Chapters 32. Chapters 32. Verse 7 and 8. Be strong and courageous. Amen. Be not afraid Amen. nor dismayed. Amen. For the king of Assyria or the devil, nor for all the multitudes that is with him, all the demons you can think of. For there be more with us Amen. than with Amen. them or with him. With him is an arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God Amen. to help us. Amen.
and to fight our battles. Yes. Can you say amen to that? Yes. And the people rested themselves upon the walls of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Yes. Amen, 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 and amen. Maybe you'll be able to rest also on the words of God that I have preached to you in this convention. Let's bow our heads. Let us pray. Restless hearts. Restless bodies. Restless spirits. Restless souls. It's time for us to find rest in Christ. Let us pray now that God will give us rest. For he is the God of rest. He is our peace. He is the God of peace. Let us pray now. That everything we have heard in this convention will not escape from us. Let it be a tremendous encouragement for us for the future. Um, some of them, okay. Is it right for a boy and a girl to practice courtship before marriage in the house of God? A boy and a girl should not practice courtship. Did you hear what I said? A boy cannot marry. A girl cannot marry. And I don't like babies having babies. A man and a lady can practice courtship. Not a boy and a girl. When you talk about a boy and a girl, you are talking about at least from 18 down. And I don't always encourage children marrying children and babies having babies. And before the courtship begins, the marriage has to be open and honorable. The authorities of the church should be involved. God should be involved. The parents should be involved. And everybody knows that something is going on. I don't believe in any secret, private engagement of any kind. We are children of light, not of darkness. Is it wrong for a brother to take your sister out for a dinner? I don't know which sister this is. Is this sister your wife? Or your sister, or your junior sister, or senior sister? What, what kind of sister is that? And why do you take her out for a dinner? Is there no food in your house? These are worldly practices that should not be introduced in the house of God. We're different people. We have our own customs and cultures. If two of you cannot eat in your house, then there is something wrong between two of you. If a boy begins to admire a girl, maybe from the age of 21, and he is still in the higher institution, he mm, has not gotten to the age of marriage, but he assumes he will love to have her as a wife. Daddy, is this love or lost? It is capital L-O-S-T. Pronounce it. Lost. If you're in school, the Bible says we cannot serve two masters. It is not possible. You cannot serve them well. If you're in school, you will do well to blind yourself over the other matter of marriage. Concentrate on your studies. Get that settled. One after another. The Bible says there is time for everything. Not everything at the same time. And if you are 21 and you are not thinking about how to pass your exam, you are preoccupied with admiring girls. Before you reach 25, you will admire about 21. Because your heart is only deceiving you. Your heart is not matured enough yet to know what admiration is. So, it will do you better to just face your education and forget about that. Please, can you tell a sister, I want you to be my future partner. Kindly explain this to us. There's nothing wrong in telling a sister, I want you to be my life partner. That is after you have told the authorities that are supposed to know first. Because you may have told so many other sisters like that. And if this one says no, you go to the other one. The other one says, no, you go to the other one. That one may say yes, and tomorrow you see a better one, you go to the other one. So don't tell her nothing. Look at Jacob. Jacob never told 
Rachel, nothing. Never told Leah, nothing. Not Bula, not any of them. At the proper time, things fell into place. Because God was in control of everything. We always want God to control everything, but when it comes to marriage, we want to control it ourselves. Just like Pentecostals and denominationals. They do everything in the name of Jesus Christ. When it comes to baptism, they reject it. And go back to their father and son and Holy Ghost. Why should we be as guilty as that? You don't just see a lady and you say, I want you to be my future partner. It's not the way it's done. Somebody owns that child. If you are sincere, climb the ladder from the bottom. Don't start climbing from up to down. Climb from down to, to up. Go to the root of that child and show your responsibility and reliability. That is our custom, not worldly custom. It is the worldly people that do it anyhow because they don't know the meaning. It means nothing to them. Is it good for a stranger to marry a sister in the church? For example, a brother that God converted in the message and he wished to marry to this sister, but the sister is a Nigerian and brother is from Ivory Coast. Um, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Nothing. There is no Ivory Coast in Christ. There is no Nigerian in Christ. We don't have such customs of segregation. The Bible says the wall of partition has been broken down. Provided the parents of this girl agree, and your own parents agree, and the church can testify that you did not get converted to get a wife and just escape with her. Your reliability is manifest. Everybody can testify that this is a brother beloved. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong at all. Every course is in Africa after all. Can a brother from Ghana marry a sister who is convert, converted in the message? I'm saying this because some sisters will say they are not willing to go outside Nigeria. And the brother is not a Nigerian. But love this sister. Well, not every sister will say that. But if a sister says she's not willing to go out of Nigeria, she has her reasons. You should be patient enough to know what the reason is. And God works on both ends. If you are not under infatuation or lost, if the sister says things that are negative, you should be happy. Leave her alone. Wait until God brings your own. Your own will understand and God will be working in her and in you. And when both of you meet, there will be no walls of partition. So don't let that frustrate you or disappoint you. Praise God. God bless you, sir. Amen. Then I want to know if you can receive the Spirit of God and still lack one thing out of the nine gifts. Yes. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit, but you have no gift to manifest. Why you are given the gift is to make you a son of God. That's the primary reason. The Bible says, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you are not a part of him. That's all. You're not a part of him. Biologically speaking, naturally speaking, a child that does not carry my blood cannot be my child. Is that true? So if you don't have the spirit of God, you're not a child of God. Simple. But the gifts are given for the edification of the church. Not for you. Not for you to boast about it and brag about it. No. Not for you to say, well, I have three gifts. How many do you have? That's not why. We are given the Holy Ghost to make us part of God Almighty. Then if God has a job for you to do, he gives you the gift to do that job. Do you understand? So you can have the nine gifts like Paul. And I don't think any of us here has the responsibility that Paul had. So to some, God gave the power to heal. Not all have the power to heal. To some, God gave power to do miracles. Not all do miracles. Some speak in tongues. Some interpret. Not all do it. So you can have the gift. I mean, you can have the Spirit of God and have one or two gifts. So that does not mean you don't have the Spirit of, of God. I don't, I, I don't know how to read this one. Hmm. Okay. Is it uh, is, okay, possible for one to have a 
female friend in church. If not, why? Because the devil will make you do wrong. That's the why. And the why has a very long tail. <laughs> Amen. And I don't think you come to church for a female friend. Is that why you come to church? Your idea of coming to church is wrong to begin with. If that is why you come to church, and if you don't see any reason why, you should not have a female friend. Have you, are you, have, how many male friends do you have? You don't want those ones. What do you want is a female friend. I'm sorry. Your ideology of coming to church is absolutely wrong from the beginning. Is it proper for a child of God to sing gospel hip hop? Which one is hip hop? <laughs> I'm serious. Which one is hip hop? Huh? What? Hip hop. What is that? Huh? Disco. Disco. Oh, okay. Just like disco, right? All right. Hip hop is what? Tell me now if it is not. What is hip hop? <laughs> Let me tell you, if you love the world, if you love the world, anything the world is doing, don't bring it into Christ. There was one Sunday, I overheard my children upstairs. It's like the rhythm that they were playing after service in their practice. I had to do like this Congo, Congo music. Uh -huh. Yes, Makosa or Cassava, whatever they call it. <laughs> I overheard it and I sent for all of them. I said, if I hear it at all, all of you, all will be disbanded. All of you. Because Satan is trying to crop into the church through you, but you don't know. There is nothing Satan loves like music. Listen. When I'm talking, you listen. Do you know that? There is nothing Satan loves like music. music. Have you ever heard this record? If you see Mami Watao, have you heard it? He said, don't do what? Because that's what attracts them. Music. Satan was choir master in heaven. Did you know that? He loves music. And that's why many musicians, when they wax a record, they go to the devil and dedicate it. Look at what they play today. You don't even know what they're playing. And people are jumping up and down. I see mosquitoes biting them. <laughs> why? Is there no thing on the record? There's no sense in what the man is singing. There's no sense in what they're playing. Maybe just one way that somebody is knocking. And somebody said, ah, I'm a mega mega, 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 I'm a mega mega. And somebody's just making one bottle. And the whole people are jumping out on that. You just wonder what is the madness? The anointing of the devil on the record. Did you know music from David cast out devils? So also music from people can invite devils. A holy music can cast out devils. And a devilish music can invite devils. See? There's no way to worship devils that there's no music. Because he likes it so much. So when you bring your music into the house of God, it attracts with it devils and demons. And before you know it, the church is polluted with devils. Hip-hop, what is that? I don't know about hip-hop. And please, for God's sake, keep worldly music in the world. If you're a son of God, you play godly music. Play godly music. You mean? Yeah, there are some songs that the choristers will want to sing and they bring them to me and I cancel it. There are some reading that the young men will play and I warn them seriously. I don't want to hear that again. Because this is open up doors to devils, but you don't know. What is hip hop? What about hip down? So please don't bring such things close. We are heaven bound. We make melody unto the Lord. Amen. No. Is there anything bad? I don't want this type of clapping. You stop, you stop, all right? Why must you be the last? Somebody's just trying to be the last. Is there anything bad in a teenage boy having a relationship with a girl based on platoon, platoon relationship without desire for sex? What are you talking? What are you talking? Nonsense. You without desire. 
you without you without desire and to deceive yourself David the man after God's own heart huh? he did not only take somebody's wife he killed the man and you are telling me without desire you something woman took him put him on his laps and scratch him until he scraped on his head and you are telling me you will have no desire you don't let the devil deceive you son don't start that's the only way out platonic or platonic leave that grammar because when Satan finishes with you you won't believe it leave women alone when you are not ready to marry there are many brothers to keep you busy be busy for the things of God face your education face your work make up your mind to win souls for Christ Satan is quenching your fire quenching your zeal quenching your love for the things of God because they are diverted all you care about is plan up to make your relationship when you find that rubbish working where you are lying to yourself you are just lying to yourself a teenager in school should face his education finish with that decide in your mind to be useful to your parents go and get a job work for a few years help your father and your mother and your brothers when you are mature enough to get married pray to God like Jacob and God will lead you and provide for you a life partner then all the platonic and platonic that you want can begin from there but not until then stop deceiving yourself stop deceiving yourself Satan is wiser than you Satan knows more grammar than you if you don't know I want to know as we may go across regions states boundaries to marry our sisters if our parents object what will be our reaction and how do we manage this type of situation well that's a good one um normally why parents are hesitant or hesitate to a reliable daughter let them know that you are a christian and the person that you will bring to marry you or the person you will bring that you want to marry will be somebody like you now if you are someone that your parents cannot trust and you are unpredictable to them on top of that you leave their own vicinity and go to another state and bring somebody when you are not reliable yourself they will say this is bye bye forever but if you are a child that they can trust a child that they love a child that they know your life is pleasing to them when you bring somebody even before you bring somebody you have watered the ground you have explained to them you have let them know where your mind is leading you they will object at first give them time to get used to it to calm down and then eventually they will give up it happened to me it happened to many others see so it is not an impossibility all it takes is patience time just wait and god will work things out amen, amen. if unknowingly to you as a girl uh, but knowingly to the boy and the boy touched your breast <laughs> is it a sin to you what were you doing that he touched your breast unknowingly to you and unknowingly to you hmm? knowingly to you and unknowingly to you it shows you were near enough for him to do that i thought they said there is no desire platonic and platonic you see the platonic now knowingly and unknowingly the platonic is no more working well touching touching you is not the sin there is the 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 sin is the motive of touching you some of you struggle to jump into the bus is that correct that way you push people people push you you don't even know who touched you who didn't touch you you're just struggling to get a seat if you're not careful they take your post self abi that way you can't write a uh, no you know no no you because at that time nobody is talking about touching anybody everybody is struggling for a seat everything is in the heart everything is in the heart so be mindful of the opportunity you give to the platonic and platonic talking about falling in love is there any age attached to it that is about the love of a woman towards a man yes yes when a man is a man he knows that he is a a man when a woman is a woman she knows that she is a a woman no children not just boys and girls television magazines videos have done more evil to this world than good 
And that's where they promote all these obscenities, activities that has nothing to do with teenagers and children. And you see them going to all these cyber caves and picking up computers and probing all these rotten Oyibo countries and seeing the garbage that they produce and they think that is normal life. That is not normal. That's abnormal. There are lives that belong to adults and there's a life that belongs to children. And when an adult behaves like a child, people blame him. And when a child behaves like an adult, people blame him. So when you talk about love between a man and a woman, it, is not, it does not belong to children or teenagers. It is wrong. So there's age limits. For a child, what does a child know about love? All that the child should love is his father and his mother. His senior brother, his senior sister, you know, his friends that they run about with. Nothing in between, nothing on the ground, nothing on the line. Just a pure, simple, clean heart. That's what a child should know. That's what a young boy and a young girl should know. Just get their food ready and they're all right. See? But a man has more than that to think about. There are other things that I should have said, but this is not the right place to say them. I should say that among matured people and married people. But suffice it to say that there is a time and there is a limit. For the particular love between man and woman, it doesn't belong to children, it doesn't belong to teenagers. When the heart of a teenager is working like the heart of an adult, something is wrong with that teenager. He or she has been exposed to the wrong life. He or she is getting more mature than his age and will get into trouble very soon. The idea of marrying a believer, does a believer only connote the end time believers or message believers? Does it mean that there are no believers from other denominations? One who fears God. I had said this before, that there are many people who fear God, so to say, who carry the Bible, so to say, but when it comes to the truth, they are bankrupt. They, can't, they don't believe what you believe. Look at Jacob, he was a shepherd. True? And when he went to marry, his wife was also keeper of the sheep of his father. So, their life will just merge perfectly because they are familiar with shooting in the name of Jesus Christ for everything you do. And the other person is also God-fearing, so to say. But her prayer is in, through Mary or St. Monica. How are you going to do it? You are calling the name of Jesus Christ. Your wife is calling St. Anthony. What is going to happen? Both of you fear God, all right. But you go to go through different roads. Some road to get to God. Some There's a block on the way. Because when you pray to God through St. Monica, I don't think it will close, close this roof. That is not a way. Jesus said, I am the way. Amen. That means there's no other. So it is not just to say uh, end time message believers. That is very serious and very vehement. That you marry the person that believes what you believe. Save you a lot of headache. A lot of headache. I want to know if a preacher can go to a hotel to preach to them about Christ. Yes, a preacher can go to a hotel and preach about Christ, but I don't want you to go. Amen. You don't go. Amen. A preacher can go to anywhere and preach, but you as a teenager, I don't want you to go to the hotel to preach to them. Did you hear me? Uh -huh. Go to the streets, go to the highways, go to the byways, go to the one corner of the market, go al along your area, stay away from the hotel. Okay? Uh -huh. From preaching to them in the hotel, they will come and call me that you are in the police station. That's another thing that you are preaching, not to the gospel again. I want to know, maybe it is good to use stretching comb to comb our hair. I don't know about stretching comb. I don't know about stretching comb, provided your hair is natural after the stretching. Huh? After the stretching comb, will your hair still be what God made? Okay, now you answer. Oh. So don't use me, don't set trap for me. <clears throat> Can you have a love a lover at your teen age as in someone truly love? 
What does a teenage know about love? Tell me, since you be from the age, let's say, 12, 15 to 20, how many people have told you they love you? How many you have told you you love? How many letters have you read? How many have you written? Which one is working now? Did they not all walk away from you? A teenager knows nothing about love. He's just fascination. Just fascinated. See? So, when you talk about truly love, what do you mean by, what do you know about true love? Yesterday I was trying to explain the three, of, the three spirits. One is what? Infatuation. One is what? Lost. One is what? And love is God. So, when you talk about true love, you are talking about God walking. And when you talk about God walking, that type does not end. It says, even many waters cannot do what? Quench love. It says the flood cannot do what? Drown it. Because it's as strong as death. You don't know what you're talking about. It's just your flesh reacting to what your eyes saw. See? So when you talk about teenagers, as in, as in, leave that grammar, you know nothing about love. Go to school, read your book. Leave all those letters they sent to you with flower inside. Hmm? And the map of a heart, wrongly drawn, with a spear in the middle. They are telling you what they are going to do to you and you don't know. When you draw a heart and put spear, don't you mean you are going to break the thing? And you are very happy. You are very happy. Ah! Your heart. But you don't see the arrow that is coming. And when the arrow strikes, then you are as miserable as I don't know what. If you have an unbeliever as a lover who admires you and loves you, you better run. <laughs> when it comes to an unbeliever, do what? Run. So, uh, don't turn to Samson and uh, Delilah now. Don't believe I love you. In fact, if I know, if you were near me, I'll give you a knock. <laughs> that, that you presented yourself in a way that an, an unbeliever will come and say he wants to fall in love with you. An unbeliever. It shows what you are too. An unbeliever should be afraid of you. Huh? When an unbeliever look at you, he will say, I don't know this one. Holy, holy. I don't know what she will say. Just leave you and go. But for you to be so approachable by an unbeliever, you know does not believe, and you stand there and is talking to you to the point of saying, ah, God have mercy on you. God have mercy on you. Please, is it wrong scripturally to go in for child adoption? No. There's nothing wrong in adopting a child, provided it is done properly and officially. Please explain the book of Jeremiah. Uh, I don't think I can do this now. I don't think I can do that now. It's not necessary. At what age can youth fall in love? Hey, Mwaka. <laughs> At uh, what age can a youth fall in love and can a Teenage brother date a teenage sister, be, a, a basis on pure and undiluted love. <laughs> My answer is no. No. Dating is an American culture. Dating is what? An American culture. Dating is like what we call courtship here. See? In, in British English, they say courtship. In American, they say dating. Dating is for two people who don't understand themselves. But they want to get into a relationship that may eventually lead to marriage. So what they do is they pick a date that two of them will sit together and talk. That is the meaning of dating. It's like courtship. People who hope to marry in future. They want to understand themselves better. They get together and talk and discuss so that they can understand whether they can make a living together or not. See? Most of the time, it's not the African culture. In the old time, it is two parents that meet and the children get married. But now, it, a civilization has changed all that. Why should a teenager 
date a teenager? What are they dating for? Are they planning to get married? Huh? He said, undiluted love. Huh? I've been a teenager. If you have not been polluted by videos, polluted by computers that you have been watching, and reading all these filthy dating magazines, a teenager, you are dating a teenager. What is the purpose? What is the reason for that? Your pastor says, no. Amen. You are not supposed to do that. <laughs> yes. Amen. If there's anybody from our Jumo church, when we close, please. There's a pastor from Oweri, Brother Shedrach. He would like to see you when we close, if you're from our Jumo church.